hi there. That would salute. So this is a topic that I haven't really wanted to go into because, you know, the science gets so murky that the average person can't really actually, you know, comprehend quite a bit of what um, I'm about to bring forward and try to say. There's a good book about the Western intellectual tradition, which is called Descartes' Error. And, you know, I don't understand all of it myself, but what I do kind of get is the, the error, you know, in it that the book is trying to put forward, and I will do the research to actually put this book in the underbar when I when I finish this video, but, you know, there's a lot of research that's coming out of neuro the neurological, you know, out of neurology in the past couple of uh, years, and, you know, the past couple of decades, and, you know, um, given what's coming out of neurology and out of the neurology departments, uh, it has been, part of the Western intellectual tradition for a very long time to see emotion and logic as fundamentally contradictory forces. In other words, as, as being antagonist of each other. So most of the time, you know, we see emotion as the enemy of reason. And so because of the fact that the West, and in the West, this is a bias that exists and it's a very strong bias apparently here on YouTube. You know, people have bought into it hook, line, and sink, apparently, even though it might never have been true. You know, it might ne there might have never been any truth to the idea that logic and emotion could not coexist with each other. There's a lot of research now that shows that, like, okay, there's a case, there's a case study in, you know, this book that he goes over where a man is basically, uh, he that kind of demonstrates that humans need emotion to make it, to make major decisions. Like there's a guy, right, a man, and he gets in a terrible accident and it damages his brain. You know, it goes right through and it, it destroys the emotional centers in his brain. So he can't feel anything anymore, but he can think, you know, and what happens to this individual, you know, he starts looking you know, at major decisions, and then he keeps calculating, and at no point does the emotional center in his brain kick in to say that, I need to make this decision now, I can't keep calculating past the point of diminishing returns. And he, he gets pretty much nothing done, he gets locked in analysis paralysis, you know, this is what happens to these individuals, thus indicating that there may be something seriously wrong with the, what, the, the foundation of Western thought, which is that, you know, emotion is the, is the antagonist of reason. We may be very, very wrong to think those things. We might be very, very incorrect. You might need emotion to be effectively reasonable. You know, and, and that, you know, being what it is, you know, is why I started doing so much of the content that I started putting forward myself in a very upset mode of thought. Yes, I am pissed off most of the time. That does not mean that what I'm saying is irrational. This book right here, look into it, the entire foundation of Western thought about intelligence, intellect, and such has always seen emotion as the antagonist of reason. It art not so.